This government meeting is brought to you by Eastworks and our local cable subscribers. Welcome everybody uh, to a regular session of the East Hampton School Committee. Just a note that as we conclude the regular session, we will be moving into an executive session and from there we will be adjourning for the evening. Um, we are gonna roll call into the meeting. Ben Hersey. Ben Hersey here. Megan Harvey. Megan Harvey here. Laura Scott. Present. Sam Hunter here. <laughs> and Linda Marquis here. Mayor. Mayor Lashville here. Excellent. This is being recorded. This is being recorded by East Hampton Media. And we have um, open attendance both in public and via Google <coughs> Meets. Um, we are going to begin with announcements and start with correspondence. Okay. Um, I only have one uh, piece of correspondence to report on. We received um, a really thoughtful email from a parent um, who was concerned about the lack of options related to life skills at the high school um, and comparing that to sort of vocational options um, and sort of asking some thoughtful questions about the cost benefits of having some of those life skills go into high school. That's all I have to report for correspondence. Do you have anything else? Uh, no, but to that point, we're gonna be looking into that further. Um, duly noted, we all received that email, yep. so. We're Thank move. you. And I did call that parent. We just had a conversation right. this afternoon. Right, so. right. good. Absolutely. Um, any gifts? I have no gifts. Okay. And do we have student, we may not have student representative updates. We tend to do them about every month and I don't see them in, a, they're not in attendance with us here in public. We did just have them right okay. before. So I, um, we always put them on the agenda just in case, but we generally have really hearty updates about once a month. So we look forward to maybe later this month or early in May hearing from our student representatives. Um, at this time, we can open the floor for public comment, either in person or via Google Meet. If you have an interest in speaking, we would just ask that you keep your statements brief, tell us who you are, share your thoughts, understand that we can't respond in the course of this meeting. And um, we'll give it a minute to see if anyone is interested in speaking. Okay, seeing no one in the room and no hands raised on Google Meets, we're going to close public comment for tonight. The next item on our agenda is our superintendent update, our stellar above and beyond superintendent, Maureen Benenda, is out of town. She is of course joining us remotely, though I don't want to take up any of her time. I don't think we have an actual update, correct? But did you have any, did you want to say anything, Maureen, or? Uh, no, we don't have an official update, uh, just that um, yesterday it was great that we had the half day, the yes. professional development for our staff. People could participate with their families and looking at the eclipse and uh, our team, uh, we the people are getting ready uh, to go forward to compete. Uh, we did have Congressman Neal there and uh, I actually got last week to go and uh, again, sit down with the kids and listen to them uh, debate. And it's really an amazing group of students and uh, their teacher, Kelly Brown, and uh, their, their other teacher who uh, used to be uh, a with people uh, student also, I've really got these students in really great shape. And then tomorrow, of course, we have our group uh, going off to Europe. So it's, it's been a really great couple of weeks and uh, it's such a great district. I, I just really you know, want people to know that. I understand the story about the life skills uh, program, which uh, we will certainly work on. Uh, but I just want everyone to know that they're very talented staff. And I, I, I keep telling you this because um, there's always 
uh, information going on in the world that maybe says things aren't so great in public education, but uh, things are really great in East Hampton. Dedicated staff, great students, and uh, really great leaders both in the school and in the district office, and a great school committee, so thank you. Thank you. Even though, even if you hadn't complimented us yet, I want to take one quick second to note one really ex, just one example of um, being really adept and on your feet. Um, Superintendent Benenda just a couple weeks ago brought to our attention this solar eclipse and how we had this opportunity because we'd already had a, a half PD day scheduled within the same week as that day. So making that change with enough time to notify families, notify students, get the PD set up. Real, I heard from a ton of other teachers that I know in different districts and families that thought, was really impressed, wish their own districts had thought of it. So just cheers to you and um, another example of the great work being done by our superintendent and our faculty and staff. Thank you. Thank you. Um, we are going to move on to the business update. Uh, Nick Bernier with the finance and personnel updates. Good evening, Mr. Bernier. Good evening, everyone. <clears throat> um, at this point, um, it's actually a little over 72.48% of the local appropriation either spent or encumbered. There was a, a payroll that wasn't posted yet when I ran that report. So it's, you know, a couple percentages uh, points higher. Um, I'm obviously continuing to monitor the budget like I always do, uh, you know, for transfers and, and things. And, you know, we do them on almost a daily basis at this point in the year. Um, areas of concern, you know, continue to be the same as other months, such as utility bills, the out of district tuition, um, and, and special ed transportation. Um, we have started reclassifying some of our special ed tuition expenses to Circuit Breaker. We did a pretty sizable journal entry today. Um, as we've received three quarters of circuit breaker payments now, so it's time to start, you know, moving those expenses. Um, and, you know, we've also submitted our circuit breaker extraordinary relief claim form um, and are just waiting to hear from Desi regarding the uh, the reimbursement. We should probably know in early May, I, I think, is their target. So um, <clears throat> my FY23 end of the year report, report amendment uh, has been done. Based on the report that I received from our external auditor, I completed the amendment a couple of weeks ago. Um, the report's been sent to the school committee as well as to the city council president and to DESE. Um, if anybody has any questions about it, I'd be happy to entertain them. I haven't received any so far, but um, yeah. I mean, nothing major in the, the report, nothing I believe I detailed in the email I sent you. It's, you know, nothing was material. A lot of cases is just a instance of you reported something incorrectly because you weren't sure how. Uh, but it's easily correctable and it's been done. Um, and it's important that those amendments get done in a timely process because that's how your net school spending figures actually get like certified and they, you know, figure out per pupil spending based on that. If you remember uh, looking through my budget book that I, you know, I'd sent you a couple weeks ago, uh, that data it's always a couple of years behind because it takes a year to get those end of the year reports done. You technically have a year after your audit to amend it, but I don't know why anybody would wait that long because the longer you wait, the you know, the longer you, it's been since you actually did the report and you, you know, you pick it up several months later and you're like, what? what? Um, you know, so it's, it's important to get that done as soon as possible. Um, lastly, my, my personnel report <clears throat> um, for the month of March, we had four new hires. We had one uh, pair educator, uh, a new special ed coordinator, and two substitutes. Uh, we had two separations, one paraeducator at Mountain View and a uh, district network technician, uh, which brings us to our current vacancies. Uh, the middle school librarian still vacant and I'm assuming it probably will remain so throughout the rest of the school year at this point, but we'll continue to look to fill that going into next year. Uh, we do have a vacant paraeducator position at Mountain View. We still have one lunch supervisor uh, vacancy and the network technician. Um, does anybody have any questions? All right, thank you. Thank you very much. Thanks so much, Nick.
Um, we're going to move on to school committee discussion. Um, the first note is a policy subcommittee update. Uh, Chair Sam Hunter. Yes, we um, had. Uh, so we've been working our way through the um, Massachusetts Mass. Mass Association of School Committees policies. Um, so for those of you who uh, are hearing about this for the first time, we essentially, this is the body that um, writes and updates a lot of uh, kind of the boilerplate um, school policy that, um, that then we write our own policies based on. Um, and we have to update these. Um, they're kept on our website um, and are, you know, um, we, we have to make sure all of our own pra district practices and policies align with those policies. So uh, for various reasons, we've been um, uh, catching up on kind of the last year and a half or so of those. And I think we have caught up um, in the last few weeks, we've been doing a lot of work on this. And I think we've Clearly. made it through uh, <clears throat> most of what I had hoped to do at the beginning of this year, um, which is good. We still have some more from um, last year to finish up. Um, but the latest uh, policies, the ones that we're going to be talking about tonight, uh, mostly have to do with um, student technology use and technology use uh, within the schools generally. And again, this is the policy that all of the rest of our policies have to minimally adhere to. So these are generally tend to be pretty broad. Um, and then the building administrators uh, kind of set their own policy for their buildings. And uh, that's based on um, what they feel is uh, is right and kind of through their own processes. So um, that's what we've been working on. Um, do you want to just mention your upcoming dates? Yeah, we have some upcoming dates, and it's a good thing that you have them right in front of you because I did not have them <laughs> right in front <laughs> of me. That's why I mentioned it. Um, so we do not. We are not actually going to be meeting uh, this week. Um, but uh, we will be meeting on the 26th of April, um, May 10th, May 24th, June 7th, I believe, although that is getting awfully close to like graduation, end of that the year stuff. That is the day, I think. Is the day of it's graduation. It's right around there. We'll see how we feel about it. It's we a might, Friday, yeah, that's yeah. graduation. I believe mm -hmm. that we, we set up all these dates way ahead of time so that we wouldn't schedule anything else for these days. Um, and uh, we'll decide if we need that June date or not. Okay. And then June 21st, same thing. If we need it, we'll use it. And if not, we'll uh, get rid of it. Of it and we're meeting um we're, this actually says nine this says 9 30 to 10 30 but it's actually nine to ten okay um so we're meeting first thing in the morning um up here and uh we're doing that because again it fits in best with all of our work schedules and mm -hmm. uh it means that we're more likely to actually get stuff done i tried to <laughs> we were trying to add another uh, monthly or bi-monthly evening meeting and it was uh, a lot on top of everything else that we're right. doing in the evenings. So. And if that changes as we move into the summer and fall, we can look at Yeah, it. well, what we're hoping to do is to have caught up on everything from MASC by the summer, which it looks like we're on track to do. And then um, we can, um, we won't need to meet as often after that because we won't have as much to catch up on. Great. Uh, thank you for that. And the finance subcommittee update from the finance chair, Megan Harvey. I don't have it. <clears throat> excuse me. I don't have any updates. We have not met. Um, we will meet again uh, at some point. Uh, we have upcoming work sessions where we'll touch on potentially some items that will get sent to the finance subcommittee. So we don't have solid dates, um, but we just continue to rely on the excellent work of Mr. Bernier. And thank you. We had no questions because you sent us that really detailed email explaining all of it. So thank you um, for that. Great. Um, next is the CES update, so we're going to move. I actually have a CES yes. update, <laughs> which is Stanford. even, it's a busy night for me tonight, I guess. And if you want to start by just explaining to the public. I would what, love to. Yes, great. So, Thank you so much. Um, CES is another acronym that you hear thrown around here sometimes. It stands for the Collaborative for Educational Services, and it is uh, based in Northampton. Um, it is a, uh, a um, nonprofit that essentially um, many school districts in the area uh, pay for membership to. We are a member district. Uh, those of us who are member districts have representation on the board. Um, and uh, so I, you know, we attend the board meetings once a month. Um, I finally was able to go to one uh, earlier, uh, I think in February. Mm -hmm. um, and it was really cool. We got to um, kind of hear, it's similar to a school committee meeting, honestly. We hear about um, how the budget's going, kind of, it, it's interesting because in our district, we're watching the numbers go down as the year goes on, and because uh, we're paying people like CES, we're watching their numbers go up as the year goes on. So um, it was kind of neat to see the business side from the other side. Um, we also talked about um, the two uh, school programs that they have um, 
right now uh, Mount Tom Academy and um, Hampshire Education, or um, uh, Heck Academy, rather. Um, one thing that they said in particular that I would really like for a school committee to, uh, to uh, uh, hopefully follow up on with me is the uh, Mount Tom Academy, which is a, um, a school for kids who uh, have had their schooling interrupted in some way. It's specifically not for kids with disabilities. Actually, I mean, kids with disabilities can participate, but it's not actually an IEP program. It's just for kids who, for whatever reason, have had some interruption and need uh, to finish high school in kind of a, um, a different setting. So it's at Holyoke Community College. Um, their graduation is coming up in June. We will have uh, at least one student graduating. And mm -hmm. so they asked if um, anybody from our school committee or from um, our town would like to go. Right. Um, that would be super cool. So I'm going to get more information about about that for anybody who would like to go um, and um, yeah it was a really neat it, it was uh, there there were like 30 people in attendance at this meeting and half of them were remote and it was all done um, using uh, Robert's rules and it was really cool to see actually um, kind of a different a larger meeting um, kind of taking on different things um, nice yeah it was cool so I'm looking forward to participating more in that yeah we'll follow up with you on that date for the graduation uh, wonderful. We are moving on to action items. Uh, the first that we have is an out-of-state field trip request. Do you want to handle that, Megan? Um, so I can put forward a motion, and then we can open up for discussion? Perfect. Okay. <clears throat> so I make a motion that we approve an out-of-state field trip request um, for a student from East Hampton High School to go to New York City on 6-12-2024. Um, and do we have I a believe it's the band. Second. Yeah, do we have a second? A uh, second. Thank you, Sam. Okay. So uh, information that I have here is that students are going to attend a Broadway show, um, and it's the band and chorus students who are going to be learning about the performing arts and musical theater in a place where that is great to learn about. To be a fly on the wall of that charter bus. Oh, gosh, really oh have you seen this group of kids? There's something else. They're good. The band and chorus kids are great. Yeah. Superintendent, yeah, kind of is there anything else that we should know about? No. Mm -hmm. We're good. Um, so we no, just... Yeah, go ahead. Oh, uh, to the chat, uh, no, just that uh, they had spoken to me about it. It's such an opportunity for them to be able to go and to actually uh, see a live show. So uh, I'm hoping that you do approve that, uh, their request tonight. Sounds awesome. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I'm I received a personal request from my child who is hoping to attend this, so I'll be abstaining for that reason. Please don't <laughs> read into it any other way. Um, so we have a motion and a second. Uh, are we ready to vote? Yeah. Yeah. Ben? Ben Hersey, aye. Megan? Megan Harvey, aye. Sam? Sam Hunter, aye. Linda? Linda Marquee, aye. Mayor? Mayor Lashville, aye. Hey, Chair Scott abstains for reasons previously stated. Congratulations, kids. <laughs> That's exciting. I can't wait. I want to hear about it afterwards. Are we allowed to? Uh, sure. Is that I will reach out to Mr. Exactly. Yu. Yeah, I'm sure that. they will come in and offer a report. Okay. okay. Cool. <laughs> All right. I have a motion to approve the school payroll dated 3-21-2024 in the amount of $603,712.30. Second. Thank you, Ben. Um, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? Motion passes. A uh, motion to approve the accounts payable authorization for payment dated 3-21-2024 in the amount of $493,388.58. Second. Thank you, Ben. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? Motion passes. Motion to approve the school payroll dated 4-4-2024 in the amount of $609,764.07. Second. Thank you, Ben. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstentions? Motion passes. Motion to approve the accounts payable authorization for payment dated 4 for 2024 in the amount of $301,406.95. Second. Thank you, Ben. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstentions? Motion passes. Motion to approve the minutes of the March 12th, 2024 meeting with a stipulation to withhold executive session minutes until matters are resolved, reviewed, and released by the chair. Second. Thank you, Ben. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstentions? Motion passes. Okay, we are going to revert now. Sam, do you want to read? Want, so how does this work best? Do you so want you're gonna, to read? Yeah, I would say, I think um, your first reading, and Sue, correct me if I'm wrong, I think your first reading, and then we would get a second on the first reading, and then it's open for discussion, like there could be some explanation. 
Um, and then it typically, I think, is reverted back to policy if there's any questions or comments raised at discussion, okay. and then it can't pass fully until it has a second reading at a different meeting. Okay, so just to explain to the public, this is going to look very and I need to read the whole clunky. thing out loud. Correct. To right. read it into the record for it to be a first everybody reading. Everybody enjoy my... Uh, yeah, this is... Buckle up, everybody. we got a bunch of these. <laughs> so this is uh, file BH. Oh, you don't read the whole Oh, policy? I thought we did. Oh. Lovely. Okay. Well, in, the, in the minutes? It, it is in the minutes. As long as it's in the minutes, yeah. Yeah. Great. Then I'm going to um, direct everybody to go to the minutes, yes. unless you would like for me to. No, I think... So the tones. way we'll do this... So we have a number of these tonight. Okay. We have well, close to eight or ten. So... Yeah. What I'll ask you to do then is just... Summarize them. A motion, we'll get a second, okay. and then a summary to open discussion. Sounds good to me. Okay. Okay, go ahead. Uh, do you want me to do the motions? Or does somebody should. else do them? All right. Um, I have a motion to, um, for the first reading, to, right? To approve to the approve first meeting. To approve the first yep. reading of uh, file BHE, use of electronic messaging by school committee members. Second. Second. Thank you, Ben. Okay, so now we can have discussion. If you want to explain a little bit. So this is just, uh, so currently, um, just so everybody's aware, in our current um, uh, manual, I guess, it's not really, well, yes, it is a manual. In our, uh, amongst our current policies, we don't actually have anything that addresses uh, school committee members and the ways that they are and aren't allowed to uh, communicate uh, with each other and with the public using electronic messaging. Um, so that includes email, text messages, social media postings, internet web forums, and internet chat rooms. Um, so essentially, th with this uh, policy, which I said uh, before is a kind of a bare bones policy, um, uh, we are still considered to be in a quorum when there's four uh, or more of us uh, texting with each other, essentially. Um, deliberation would be moving towards any kind of decision or sharing information about topics that might come before the school committee or that are before the school committee. Um, and we're not essentially not to do any of that outside of the context of a uh, school committee. Um, and. Uh, Essentially, we should only use electronic messaging between us uh, for housekeeping purchases, per purchases, <laughs> definitely not purchases, <laughs> purposes, uh, such as requesting paper towels. agenda items, <laughs> meeting times, uh, meeting dates. All of the scheduling logistics is, is fine, but we need to be really careful about talking about other things. Um, and uh, that um, every, everything that we message to each other or to the public uh, can be uh, considered a public record under public records law. Um, and so we should be using our district email addresses, um, and uh, they should be archived. So Correct. that is Sounds essentially great. it. Um, any further questions or discussion for the first reading? I, I was wondering, uh, recently, was it more Healy was going to put forth something about whether or not, as an elected official, you can block people mm. or, like, kind of curate your friends list or something, or, or do you have to have... You have to accept everybody who wants to be friends with you in, in a social media conference. I heard about heard Maura about Healy too. taking this on. I mean, my understanding, and we talked about this at policy a little bit, and then and then I've talked to a few others, um, a, a few other folks in the know. Um, my understanding is that if you're using like your Facebook page, for instance, to do your job as school committee, like if you're using it to solicit information from the public, to ask questions, or to get feedback, um, then you do kind of have to more or less be open to everybody. Also, you shouldn't do that. There yes, are and you shouldn't do that. You should have a, if that's how you're going to, you should have a you should dedicated have page, page that states that you're a public official, um, and even then, be careful. I do also want to want to point out too, you know, just to the, so that the public understands, this also includes, you know, like the, uh, East Hampton's a very Thank Facebooky you. town, and yes. we have a lot of forums in town um, it, it generally like if there's a conversation happening about the school committee or about the schools we really can't participate in even that. if we're tagged even if we're tagged into it as happens from time to time and so um, you know it's uh, it's been great for me because um, then I don't get involved in a lot of internet discussions when I should be <laughs> sleeping um, but uh, I you know I think sometimes people get a little bit confused about like what transparency versus right. um, like they might think that we're not being transparent when actually we are trying to be as transparent as possible Great. by not engaging in any of that conversation. Because whomever is not in Facebook or in that group yeah. or in that conversation isn't aware of that end. Yeah. So, um, I mean, my, my whole thing is I, um, I don't ever post about a school committee um, on Facebook um, aside from, you know, once in a while the lo logistics, you know, mm -hmm. which is allowable. Um, For example, if we had to cancel a meeting due to weather or something yeah. like that, we might post that on Facebook. But aside from that, 
but um, but yeah, so you know, people's just I just want people to be aware of that. Um, and also, anytime you do con connect with any of us about anything related to the school committee, our work on school committee, um, that can become a public record. Right. Um, so, which is just you know. It's just an important thing to remember. There's a lot of really sensitive stuff that gets shared. People talk about their kids. So it's totally um, understandable and, and a lot of times necessary. But um, Will you say that last piece again, the what can be considered public record? And any written exchange between us and a member of the public okay. about our job in okay. school committee. So if someone sends an, a direct message or a private message that could be requested, FOIA'd? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Absolutely. Just wanted to clarify for that. Which means that if you do talk to people that way, and it does come up, we like live now, like people right. text each other, people sure. send emails to the wrong email address, people will message you on Facebook. Um, I've been trying to kind of move those conversations to a more acceptable platform, and then, um, but then also remind them, you know, like this is, uh, talking to me this way is public record. So just, yeah. they should be aware of that. Mm -hmm. um, or it could be public record. Um, any other discussion? I have another quick question for you about mm -hmm. it. Um, just to clarify so that everyone's clear and it's in you know, our public meeting. So things that go to our email address are already archived and accessed. Do they? they Correct. Get, okay. If it's something like Facebook or text messages, that would be need to be FOIA'd, uh, Freedom of Information Act requested. Mm -hmm. Okay. But they're public record. I just wanted to make sure. I'm, okay. That's my understanding. I like, like my, my email is open to administrators. Yeah. Right. My so like, there is no assumption of privacy or anything in in my <coughs> email. Excuse me. Um, but clearly, with my phone, I text my partner or my right. child or whatever. If there were to be something that comes up, there would be specific limits. Of like, here's what we're Correct. looking for from your personal. Well, and you know, uh, I, to some extent, but I, I, so I'm a state employee in my other job, and one of the things that we're always warned about is that you know, our if you use your personal device okay. for school committee stuff, it right. could be that device could be FOIA at okay. some point, or could be if there was some kind of investigation, it, it could be taken and and. Um, searched so you'd be um, served with a subpoena it would, yeah it would outline the parameters of what they're yeah. allowed to look at what they're looking for yeah I just wanted to make sure it was yeah. all yeah. but it's yeah there is yeah. you know that is worth you keeping in mind but mm -hmm. this is like it's about it it happens yeah exactly no it does okay. um so and we've all been all of us have been kind of aware um yeah aware of that happening in other places too so thank you other questions. Any other questions or discussion on this? Again, this is a first reading to remind us and the public that we're not adopting this tonight. The process requires us to have it read in at two separate meetings, pass both times before it's adopted. Okay, so I think we're ready to vote. We're gonna roll call vote on these just for clarity. So Ben? Ben Hersey, aye. Megan? Aye. Laura Scott, aye. Sam? Aye. Linda? Aye. Mayor? Aye. Okay, passes unanimously. Um, the next, I love these are all just acronyms. Oh, it's like acronyms. I know, no, it's, well, I'm, anyway. Um, so I move to, uh, for, to do a first reading of the uh, EHAA proposed policy uh, from MASC, District Security Relating to Technology. Second. Thank you, Ben. Ben is seconding, perfect. Um, and so this, this is basically, again, a very bare bones policy um, around our, uh, the way that we secure, um, uh, we do um, security for our technology it's in our schools. This I believe, I can't remember off the top of my head because there are so many of these. I believe this is replacing a former policy. Mm -hmm. um, yep. And uh, in my memory, they were basically the same. Yes. I, I believe so. Um, but essentially, this is basically saying that we're. I thought it was, but I. Might. I have them both in my packet. Uh, yes, but what you have in your packet is a copy of the MSC, oh, okay. oh. and then you have that language that transcribed is. with a track of first seconds. Well, that's why they look so similar. Right. Oh, right. okay. Oh, yeah, the minutes are in here too. Right. Okay. That would be a helpful thing to uh, it refer exactly to. The same. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so anyway, this is not replacing an old policy. I apologize. Okay. Um, so this is basically just saying that um, that students and um, well anybody involved in our schools uh, do have. Um, uh, right to their own data privacy, uh, kind of to the degree that the law stipulates, and uh, we're basically just saying that we will um, protect uh, from unauthorized access or use. 
Um, again, very like very bare bones. Once we went over all of these policies in the policy subcommittee, um, the superintendent did you know check with um, Russ when we had questions, mm -hmm. um, which I don't think they came up for any of these early ones. So to be clear, that was a motion and a second by Ben, right? And we are now yes. in discussion. Okay. Um, any other questions or discussion after that explanation? This one. Okay. Uh, we're going to roll call Ben. Uh, ben, ben Harvey, aye. Megan? Megan Harvey, aye. Laura Scott, aye. Sam? Aye. Linda? Aye. Mayor? Aye. Okay. On to EHB. All right. So this is data and records retention. Mm -hmm. Um, and this this goes along with the one that we just, oh, sorry, I have to propose a motion. Uh, I have a motion to, <laughs> <laughs> I'm making a motion to uh, do a first reading. Approve for, the first reading. Approve yep. the first reading Perfect. of EHB, data and records retention. And a second? Second. Thank you, Ben. Go ahead. Now, one thing here, it does say uh, public records of the district uh, is X. It, there's a place in here to put the actual name of the custodian of um of these, uh, whoever is holding this information. Okay. Um, but essentially, we are required as a district to um, retain records for a certain period of time. It depends on what record you're speaking about. Student records have to be retained for a certain period of time. Personnel records have to be retained for a certain period of time. And we're basically saying that there's going to be one person in the district who's appointed um, to do that. And um, that under public records law, all of our, like we were just saying, basically all of our communication with each other electronically is considered a public record. Mm -hmm. um, and that's true for district employees uh, as well as um, school committee. Okay. We don't have one yet. Yeah, we don't have one yet. And that is actually... And it's not in here. That's actually a question I had about that was do we need to add that for the first reading? Ah. If you're adopting a policy, it should be. So is it possible, what we may have to discuss is whether or not, I don't love say, the idea of naming an individual, we should I name a position. Either. Exactly, that's what I was going to say. Yeah. Right, something, something like Can that. Can we say that the custodian of the public records of the district is appointed by the superintendent? That's something to that effect? I, when we met, we talked about the superintendent we, and is when, the custodian. Yeah. We'd have to run this by council, we just have to check with Russ to pray. Yeah. Right. Something like that, but I don't know what exact language they would. Okay, so a note on this one that we need to get clarification on that. And does that, um, and we'll also get clarification if, if we amend things, does that mean it goes back to a first twice. reading? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, I so I yeah. Um, I think also part of this was that it's supposed to be in a prominent position on the website. Yes. Who the person is, so I, that just needs to happen. Okay. Right, know. right. So I think. Do you want to withdraw the motion for yeah. this one? Yes. Okay. So we're going to withdraw I, the motion for the, and get, let me get the acronym correct. EHB. EHB. Thank you, Megan. It wasn't seconded, so I can just withdraw it. It was seconded, it was seconded. which is what opened the discussion. Okay. So that's why I would suggest you withdraw okay. rather than I, we vote it down. Withdrawing okay. the EHB. Okay. Data and records. We'll protection. get some clarity on those points that we raised, yeah. and then we can introduce for our first reading. Okay, reintroduce for first reading. Perfect. All right, pull this one out of the pile. Next is GBEE. -E. Now, this was another one where it says uh, procedures. Motion like, first. Oh, sorry. That's okay. Um, I make a motion to uh, approve, approve the first, the first reading. reading of file GBEE, -E, which is personnel use of technology. Perfect. Second. Thank you, Ben. Okay, go ahead for So this is basically another um, another policy, very similar to the last couple, about um, using uh, staff and other personnel at, in the district using technology uh, while they're at school. Um, basically, saying that there's going to be an appropriate digital use form um, that uh, that um, they will be signing, which I believe there there already is. I think this was what we did was we went through here. We were like already doing that, already doing that. Um, that staff needs to use their school issued accounts mm -hmm. when they're communicating with students and parents and guardians, um, and also with each other uh, when conducting school business. So like not using your personal email to talk to parents or using your personal email to talk to um, to friends or, or colleagues at school. Um, that any communication between employees is a matter of public record. Um, and that includes the use of social media if they're doing district business. So again, like we were just talking about with our social media, um, you know, teachers at our schools, for instance, should not be like having parents engage with them on their own Facebook page to get information out. They should be using more official channels for that. Um, and this is all stuff, by the way, that like is very kind of um, 
<laughs> 101 in this world now. Like, I really feel like if we've been having this conversation the last time I was on school committee, it would have been a really different conversation. But this mm -hmm. is all very, like, this is how a lot of workplaces are just in general now. Um, that um, an, an important point in here is about um, student organization pages or team pages where um, the, the, the student organizations can kind of create their own social media pages, Instagram, Facebook, or um, kind of whatever uh, comes up, but that there does need to be a faculty advisor um, who is an administrator of that group um, and that they, they are kind of controlling who is using it and, and posting on it. Um, and uh, that if a coach or an advisor is, um, is getting in touch with a student for whatever reason, um, it, unless it involves medical or academic privacy, there should be um, an administrator um, or another or other members of the team. It shouldn't just be like one coach, e like texting one mm -hmm. person member mm -hmm. of the team at a time. Either they're texting everybody or they're texting one member of the team with another um, school administrator on that um, on that text. Um, and that just in general, when interacting with students online, group interactions are encouraged and should include two staff members. Um, and that there should not be one-on-one -on -one interactions between um, personnel and students um, outside on, online. So you know you shouldn't be messaging students directly, um, you know, outside of um, school email or outside of class, essentially. Um, and that kind of any kind of um, failure to abide by this policy is considered misuse, um, which can lead to disciplinary action. Misuse is like kind of a big deal when we talk about state. Um, business in general, like misusing state property or misusing state uh, resources. Um, and the same thing goes for um, schools, which are obviously uh, municipal organizations too. So um, so that's essentially it. It does, um, you know, there's a bunch of cross references here that, you know, where it lines up with these other policies that are already in existence. Um, and again, we went through this and, and kind of determined that for the most part, we're all, this, this is kind of already expected. Um, there were a couple of points that, um, particularly around like using um, a team page or an, or an organization page, a student organization page, where we felt like that really needed to be uh, clarified a little bit more. Mm -hmm. Is this when we talked about comments being featured? No, that was in the, that was the next one. Okay. <laughs> Any other questions or discussions? I just want to. Does there need to be oversight, or is there oversight on this? I mean, I don't know if it matters. Maybe that's just that the that's law exists is <laughs> the rule exists is enough. But is anybody checking on this? I mean, I'm, I'm just curious if that's like would it be applied fairly, right? If there's yeah. potential disciplinary action, mm -hmm. is there a general like checking on? social media accounts? Or I, oh, I see what you mean. You know? yeah. Um, yeah, 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 yeah. I don't know. Okay. We're just sort of hoping and assuming I, the best, which is great. <laughs> yeah, I think I brought up when we discussed this in the policy committee that I think that with coaches and with things, you know, when things like mm -hmm. that, that that's so difficult because well, oftentimes they are just dealing with one, one student. So how that's all going to play out, you know, I think, I think they're in the learning curve of that too, you know. Um, because I think that is happening. Superintendent Benenda, do you have any thoughts on this? I feel like... Yes, I through the, through the chair. So uh, at the beginning of the year, policies have gone over with all staff members. So they've made aware of the policies and how they have to follow through with it. Uh, do we regularly check to see if that happens? Uh, not usually. Um, how we would find out there's been a violation, obviously, if something's reported to us. Got it. Mm. That's what I would expect. Makes mm -hmm. sense. Mm -hmm. yeah. And you know, future iterations of the handbook could reflect yeah. um, revisions that we've made to policy. Um, any other questions? Yeah. Any other questions? yeah. Um, <clears throat> just clarifying. So this is um, personal use of technology that was given by the district for use. No, this is all, all oh, technology. So like, for example, these things like online activities that would not be considered appropriate in the classroom should not be conducted online. Yeah. Well, it, it not, wait, hold on. Which, which? Uh, I'm down one, two, three, four, five, six. Any oh, online okay. activities would not be considered, any online activities that would not be considered appropriate in the classroom should not be conducted online. High standards of appropriate online communication and conduct must be maintained. I'm wondering about how that. What does that mean? Yeah, yeah, uh, that's a good like, question. Let's say a staff member comments on a post in the East Hampton group page. Mm -hmm. 
Um, and I mean, what do we mean by appropriate? Right. You know? Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. Feels that's a great. Ways. That's a good. That's a good thing to look into. I would think. I think the first time I read it, I interpreted it as. In as acting as a teacher, right? Yeah. yeah. But that's my question. It's not specific enough, is yeah. it? Hmm. Right. So, so if you're just as a private citizen taking off your teacher yeah. role and saying this. Um, well, and then it's also online activities, right? So like that's not necessarily just using social media, mm-hmm. right? Like you know, there's right. there's other things that people do Certainly. on the internet. Yeah. Mm. Um, so and again, it can, it can triggers that question of how do you implement that fairly, right? right. Can right. I just can I just be looking around on Facebook, see a comment from right. a staff member, and take offense to it, and call Superintendent Beninda and say, "Well, see that I feel like that makes sense to me. It does. Is that like if somebody is 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 um, kind of engaging in um, in behavior online that's not um, that with their real name that they work under, that is that is not setting a good example. But, that's something I but think. But what if could. another person but, is engaging yeah. in the same behavior in right. a much lesser known social media exactly. app that you don't happen exactly. to subscribe to? How do you? Yeah. I, I mean, Both if you're mayor. speeding, yeah. you're speeding, you're speeding. Yeah. Whether you're caught or not. Sometimes you get a ticket, sometimes you don't. Right. I mean, I'll say routinely on the city side, we have conversations with employees and volunteers and board members all the time about how they're presenting stuff on um, on city matters or how they're feeling that they didn't express in a meeting. I mean, it's a fine line, but, but the conversation's more around, like, you're, uh, you know, representing the city of East Hampton. Now, if it's about what color daisies you like, okay, well, that's you. Um, but if it's about um, disparaging or, or negative. But um, can I, can I yeah. piggyback on that? Because I'm curious how you think about this. So when I'm reading any online activities that would not be considered appropriate in the classroom, let me give a hypothetical example. Let's say a teacher would not appropriately state in a classroom endorsing a political candidate, for mm-hmm. example, right? But that doesn't, in my view, make it in any way inappropriate for them to do mm. online, right? right? So yeah. the, that's where the language to me feels a little... Uh, yeah. Yeah. Well, and again, and it also makes me think of um, online activities. You can now go online and, and do um, uh, sports betting, you know, yeah. like that's completely legal, very inappropriate to be doing in a classroom, but like what you do in your own time, like right. we don't have a problem with teachers doing that if that's what they want to do. It's a real slippery So slope. yeah, I, yeah. If, it said like, if it said like social media specifically right. or if something, I would feel better about it. You know, and that's what I was thinking about when we read it. When yeah, we I mean, it's, it. it's spaghetti to, yeah. no, I mean, totally yeah. agree. Yeah. Yeah. It's, mm-hmm. it, it, the level of concern, I mean, it's really an HR matter. Um, you know, maybe so, she could talk about it or, or whatnot, but well, I know I was, that Russ had really good guidance on it. At one point, it yeah, came up, and and he had some good examples. Yeah, just I want to make sure that if that is what's going to go through, if that's what MASD has proposed right. and what we're adopting, I think that's going to have, I would suspect, a large impact on some members of our staff, well, and faculty who make who speak freely online, maybe in I don't know ways that. Well, let me... Um, May or may not be disparaging. Why don't we put this one aside, too? Okay. Mm-hmm. And then I, I will... Sorry. Um, no, no, I think, no, I this think is good. This, a really good. This point. is good. Because I, I, was, I was only thinking about it in terms of, like, stuff that you do on social media that is traceable back to right. who you are right. that, like, your students might see. Right. But mm-hmm. clearly, like, it's written in a much broader way than that. Mm-hmm. So I think what I would like to do is actually see... I would like to see what other communities are doing yeah. with this. Um, and I think it would be good to check in with Russ about that, because um, that is a little more broad than uh, I would like it to be. Okay, so you want to withdraw the G B E as well. Okay. <coughs> oh, through the chair, can I just say one thing? Sure. Uh, so you see these policies abroad, and then the district uh, develops procedures mm-hmm. to back up the policy. So the policies are abroad for a reason, because there are so many things that can happen, especially in social media. Uh, what could happen is that the district would then come up with procedures that would then help us if some of these things came up. So the policy is broad, but the procedures are specific. Right. Who writes the procedure? Administration. Uh, the administration would write the procedures. I guess the question about it is, if we leave it this general, 
it allows for a different um, makeup of school committee and or administration to, to do change things it. like say, I'm looking to see whether or not you place sports bets or I'm right. We don't want to leave it open to being weaponized or abused. Yes, exactly. And we also don't want Thank it you. so broad that it can't be implemented at all so that it yeah. becomes an utterly useless policy. Thank you for saying that. That's what I'm worried about. I'm worried about it, its potential for going too far. Right. Or just so n numb that it's yeah. meaningless and then why are we passing it? Right. Let, yeah. let me let me look do yeah, some more just research. Me, we're not yeah. throwing it away. No, we're no, setting wanna, it aside so we can this is why we, we do multiple readings. Away. Yeah, exactly. Right, yeah. So let me let me do some more research on that. Okay. Uh, next on the docket, let's see how we can massacre this one. This is uh, <laughs> IJND. Uh, well, this is how this is how it always goes. This is why I've scheduled so many meetings. Access to digital resources. So we're gonna start um, with a motion. Yes, I have a motion to, for the first to approve, to approve the first reading Perfect. of, I'm going to get it by the end of it. I believe in you. Of uh, 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 policy IJND, access to digital resources. Great. Um, second? I will second that. Excellent, go. So, um, so again, this involves the uh, Empowered Digital Use Form, which we talked about a little bit earlier, just kind of saying that um, for students and for staff members, um, which basically is is uh, kind of laying out what is considered to be uh, appropriate and safe use of the internet at school. Um, we do have to develop and implement, which I believe we already have, I think that um, the superintendent was talking about this at our meeting, um, appropriate procedures to provide guidance for access uh, to digital resources for students and for, um, and for uh, everybody else. Um, essentially, we should uh, not allow uh, prohibited or illegal activities um, or things that um, might destroy uh, parts of our network. Uh, so, like access to things that <laughs> involve malware. Um, I not, little, it'd be horrible yeah. if it happened. I'm not. It's, no, that's no. Not it's um, <clears throat> you know, my wife is a teacher. She uses yeah. teachers pay teachers a lot uh, to get her her uh, the amount of viruses that we've gotten. Yeah. Mm. Teachers pay teachers is ridiculous. Okay. So. Um, so anyway, uh, again, employees are to be using the district email, devices, and networks only for purposes uh, directly related to education uh, and their jobs. Um, and that uh, sometimes there might be uh, times when our, our network or our materials are available to the community. One example that we talked about at our meeting was um, the fact that the Wi-Fi here is is our Wi-Fi the, up here on the second floor, and that when people come to meetings up here, anybody can use it. Um, we, we have the password written down, um, but in order to use it, you do have to agree that you're not gonna um, down, download a bunch of malware or do anything illegal. Um, so, um, that, so these empowered digital use documents can either be like a policy that the student signed at the beginning of the year, or just like that little checkbox that you click that says, I promise I'm gonna follow all the rules um, that you don't read. But um, but they're there. <laughs> um, so um, and then also anybody who um, who does uh, destroy anything or loses anything um, like computers, um, well not cell phones because we don't give those right. out, but computers, other materials, um, they they are going to be uh, responsible for replacing them or fixing them. And this is again an update to a previous policy. The different the um, differences were very slight. I think they just added additional. We have the current one. We have the MASC one. Can you specify what the changes are because the minutes weren't clear? Oh, okay. Do I don't know if we have the updated one. Policy, mm -hmm. which is much, much more detailed, two pages versus the NASC policy. Mm -hmm. Right. Right. I have no idea what you're looking to change. Didn't we talk? I, hold on. I need to take this apart. Oh, no. These are. This is, uh... I have uh, mine in the correct order. Do you want to see? So this was the MASC, one? and this is the current policy. Yeah, so this this was the one that they they sliced up. This was the one that they, um... So what they did was they took this IJND, um, and they turned it into IJ... Ah. And they, they... This was the problem that we ended up having so, okay. with the way that we did this. Just for the public, so on our list for tonight, we have, like... Yeah. Access to digital resources, use of technology and instruction, yeah. acceptable use of digital resources. All of these were one okay. before. So all of these were IJND. Okay. And now they've been broken out. And this actually, BC, got it. we had trouble with this <gasps> IJND, policy B, too. IJND, C. Okay. That's um, making way more sense. Yes. Okay. No, it, it was hard for us to parse at, the, trust me, when I was printing all these things out and trying to like 
come up with all this stuff. I'm gonna steal this back or it's gonna mess so me up the, forever. So we have the current one that combines them all and the suggestion is that we go to, as MASC like, lays out, to bust it out. Versions. Yeah, I mean, I, I mean, <clears throat> well, I mean, I guess we could, or I guess our, I mean, hold on. This was the exact same problem I had when we went over this before. They're not making it easy. I didn't name uh, They did not, no, and then um, some of them, one of at least one of them the letters were reversed so. so i think that maybe what we need to do if we look at k through m yeah as one unit yeah. this needs to be withdrawn and okay and reviewed <laughs> which is again for the public yeah. we can't do this outside of these meetings yes, exactly. <laughs> <So>. <laughs> we're gonna withdraw yeah. and um so we're gonna withdraw k wait, and we are wait, not on. gonna hold introduce on. l and m tonight Wait, hold on. We might actually be able to do those. Wait, now I've lost my... On your agenda? Right. Okay. Hold so on. that's going to be the I-J-N-D-B okay. and I-J-N-D-C. Yes. You're not going to review? No. We're going to, yeah, we're going to... So we're those. going to remand all of those back to policy to figure out what exactly policy the policy subcommittee is recommending to the full committee as far as breaking out yeah. our current pot, right? Or yeah, that was the so problem. You're drawing your motion and second for the IJND also. Correct. Yes. And then we are and not going to be reading B and C tonight. Right, I just, I, so many letters. <laughs> Dear Lord. Yeah, no, this was, this was. It's difficult. very confusing. Yes. And I mean, this is, a, let me just make this point too, because people watching this might think this is a dumpster fire. So <laughs> these policies are very, exacting there's a yes. lot of detail and our policy subcommittee attacked this head on like they were looking at a ton <laughs> of material in a really short period of time in the interest of expedience so now we're seeing some of these can clearly get moved on some of these need further review and some of these we have to figure out do we want to keep them broken down do we want to keep them right so that's so the, the discussion so the next one I'm can I do a motion for J.I. Yep. CJ for the first, yep. to prove the first reading of that's item N under action items everyone the J.I.C.J. so so this is student use of technology okay, so a motion, oh, motion for sorry that's okay <laughs> motion for the first reading for approval for first reading do we have a second from Ben so go ahead so this is again um, this pertains to student use of technology in schools um, and essentially this is a, an extremely broad policy around student use of all technology. And again, this is supposed to kind of underpin the uh, policies that are set by building administrators. Um, so essentially it's saying that students have to sign that appropriate digital use form, uh, that they have to use digital resources in responsible, efficient, ethical, and legal manners. They have to follow the district code of conduct. Um, there's no expectation of privacy. So if they have their cell phone or their computer at school, um, they can't assume that what they're doing on it is private or that the um, that they um, deserve any kind of privacy in their use. That's not what this says. Well, it says Students are reminded, reminded that there is no expectation, expectation of privacy in the use of district Digital, oh, resources. digital resources. I just want to be clear because yeah. cell phones is a different but, but issue. Doesn't that count Wi-Fi? I'm just saying what this yeah. policy says is a district digital resource. Right. I'm wondering if our uh, school, um, what's the words? Wi-Fi counts as a district digital I, resource. It, I think it does. That's yes. how I was reading so that's, this. Was that's that why it did. cell phones. Yeah. That's why cell phones. Give it, unless you have somehow managed to get 5G inside the school, which I don't think it's possible. <laughs> If your phone connects to our internet, then it, uh, this applies. Well, I got a lot of questions about that. Then <laughs> <laughs> I do. Yeah. Um, no, absolutely. Awesome. And and this is like I said, this is really broad. Right. Like and and also like the one that we were just talking about about the public use of Wi-Fi too is right. this, is the same thing right. essentially. Yeah. Um. So, uh, uh, basically. One thing that I appreciate about this is that it is so broad um, and it does kind of establish that like students need to learn how to use technology mm -hmm. as a part of their education. Who, who teaches them that? Like I mean, uh, they might know, but I was thinking like, you know, students shall utilize digital resources in a responsible, efficient, ethical, and legal manner. That's a procedure, not a policy. Okay. Yeah. That's up to the school. Mm -hmm. That's yeah. up to administrators, school community, or um, that superintendent administrators. And I think it happens at home also. That's like parents are having to sign these <coughs> digital use forms as well on behalf of their kids at the beginning of the year. 
Right. So I think it's a partnership. Well, and they also it also says in here, yeah, they're required to abide by the district code of conduct, both on and offline, of district digital resources, mm -hmm. which should be regarded as an extension of the classroom. So that also includes, you know, if they're using, if they if they are using internet resources for to turn in coursework, for instance, right. mm -hmm. they do have to follow that. If I don't know if we have Chromebooks going home with kids anymore, but if we they're do. bringing Chromebooks home to to work on, you know, yeah. and then they're also using those Chromebooks books to harass somebody or mm -hmm. to, to kind of um, engage in, in problematic behavior towards other students, you know, they're, they're subject to the same rules and uh, expectations. Does this include AI? Huh? Like, does that include AI? Like this, well, it, this is oh, um, digital, digital, you, digital resources from the school. Mm -hmm. yeah. Te technology from the school. It's very broad. Mm -hmm. Like, and again, it's very broad because we're supposed to be putting additional policies and procedures on top of it that's gonna match the needs of the buildings and, the, of, and of the community. I have a question. Megan has a question, yep. So the fact that this is sort of going back to this, but I just, I'm interested in the clarification. Um, because it says in this policy, teaching students appropriate use of technology is part of the responsibility of the district. We wouldn't say how that happens, but we would, we can ask for clarification that it's happening or evidence that it's happening? It needs to happen. Right? Like, who is doing it? Can we just ask for the clarification? Not as part of the policy, mm -hmm. but because it's in here. I don't understand. Can you say that one more time? <clears throat> so if we are curious, <clears throat> excuse me, about how teaching... This is a new policy. Right. Yeah. Okay. Go ahead. Okay. So it's not necessarily, ha it doesn't have to happen because it's a new policy. Okay, that I can clarify. I'm saying it doesn't so ex necessarily adopted, exist today yeah. because yeah. what they're proposing. Doing it. But because it doesn't exist, we can't. Well, we can't. Well, and we do have. You know, we. Does that make sense? No. <laughs> we do have. If you. My brain's a magical. If you go through, so when when I when we brought this up for the for the policy subcommittee meeting, I actually moved the meeting to the evening because it seemed like there might be some interest um, in. Um, from the community in yeah. it. And I brought the cell phone policies from, mm -hmm. because that seems to be you know what, what has been causing a lot of the issues. I brought the cell phone policies along to that meeting. Only one person showed up. Um, but I brought the cell phone policies along and um, they're very clear, like no cell phone use in school, period. So we already have existing policies mm -hmm. right. that involve, and, and we, in, we have an existing an ex procedure. Well, we have an exist, isn't, isn't it a policy if it's in the handbook, though? If it's, it's, if it's a school committee policy with a code on it, uh -huh. and it's in the policy manual, it's a school committee policy. But, but, the, but the, if it's just something practiced daily in the schools, even if it's in the school handbook, mm -hmm. that doesn't necessarily... It's a procedure in the school. So it's a procedure, even if it's like written down yes. in a handbook, it's a procedure. Policy as a term okay. of art is strictly the stuff that's in our book and approved okay. by the school that's a, That's slightly different from my understanding of it, but that's because... As the term of art, right? Exactly, yes. yes. So, right. so yes, yeah, so that's the procedure. The building administrators come up with the procedures for the buildings, which are like pretty um, black and white right now, to be honest, and pretty straightforward. Forward. So whether or not you know we're happy with the procedures, or whether or not the community feels like those are the appropriate procedures, or that they're that's that's a different conversation than this um, very bare bones policy, which MASC has put together for the first time in 2024. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So <laughs> it's me it's meant to be the guardrails, yes, right? Exactly. It's a good start. Exactly. Yeah. So um, so and the, which is why I wanted I wanted to clarify that because I think like there's. There seems to be some um, misunderstanding about like what is within the school committee's purview, and honestly, right. like what I think we should be allowed able to do, and I don't actually think we should have that kind of power, no. yeah. to be honest. Yeah, no, I, I think um, so, um, so that so that's um, kind of where that one is at. It's a very this is a very broad policy. Yeah, um, that I says, would love a little more just to have somebody in the know clarify what what will qualify as district digital resource. Mm -hmm. Aside from that, I think the policy makes a lot of sense. Does anybody have a question or a yeah, I, I mean, I would just, I was trying to find some definition here. I, I think it's purposely broad because mm -hmm. we just don't know what it is. Mm -hmm. I mean, there are there are school districts, departments, classes, or whatnot that have TikTok accounts mm -hmm. and have lessons on it, you know, and what will come next, I, I you know, we don't know. I mean, that's the, um, I'd be interested to hear what other committees, I mean, I think mm -hmm. that, yeah. you know, we probably know one tiny scooch of what's going on. Um, and how it could affect policies or things we want to let the school go. 
Yeah. And I, w I will say there's like, this is an area, this is a, a sector where we see a lot of changes really quickly. Mm -hmm. And um, as we have all seen tonight, it takes a lot of work to keep up with, um, uh, with yeah. changes that happen this quickly. There, I, I do think it's worth pointing out too, you know, I, I, there's a lot of, um, I think there's, there's a lot of concerns in general right now. Like in, anytime you hear, if you're, a, I'm a parent, like I hear, um, there's a lot of things to be worried about as a parent right now. Um, the, the, the one, the, the parent who did come to that, that meeting that we had, um, who did speak, it was really um, interesting to, to hear her perspective as the parent of a kid with a disability who uses his phone mm. to help um, participate more in school, mm -hmm. um, concerned that any changes to that policy were going to make him feel even more isolated and ostracized than he already feels. Right. So I think it's really important, too, to remember, like, as uh, we're adopting a policy right now, um, and then, but then the technology keeps going, and when we return to this, whenever MASC updates it, or whenever we feel like we need to update it, we don't even know, really, what we're going to be talking about, or who we're going to be talking about. So, um, so I would be, I'm for, this is, like you said, there's kind of a question around this district digital resources. I think that can be clarified mm -hmm. even after we pass the policy. Absolutely. Um, <clears throat> but this is just a very basic, mm -hmm. um, you know. I think my perspective on like raising a point like that would be if I'm questioned in the future about a policy, mm -hmm. we may well be the ones asked to interpret it in the issue of a conflict, let's right. say. So I would hate to see us trip into that situation like, mm -hmm. oh, you know, I'd never stop to consider what that might mean. <laughs> right, exactly. Well, and it's also important, I, I feel like too, just the, our role on school committee, it's important to be like the problem that we are illustrate that you're talking about right now, who is whose jurisdiction does that fall all under um, have we tried the normal like the actual way that that this problem is supposed to be solved and and kind of where where's the missing link or like where are the um, the holes that we're stepping into mm -hmm. and it's less about like uh, us saying this is right or this is wrong and it's more like kind of making sure that everybody's got kind of a, a path that they can follow to to get to a place where they feel like um, they, they know what to expect more yeah. or less yeah um, any further questions, discussion on this? Are we ready to vote? Ben? Ben Hersey, aye. Megan Dean Hervey, aye. Laura Scott, aye. Sam Hunter, aye. Ed DeMarkey, aye. Uh, Nicola Chappelle, uh, uh, Mayor La Chappelle, aye. <laughs> okay, great. Guardrails, thank you. Um, I want to make a suggestion to yeah. you, which I would have done at the end, but I'm afraid I'll forget. In the future, what would be great, and um, one of us that's not me could probably help you with the tech side of this. Mm -hmm. I think for future first and second readings, let's be prepared with slides so we yes. can project the text. I think that would be great. Oh, yeah. 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 No, I think that's okay. a great idea. Do you want me to put this up there? I can do that. Cool. Oh, God, just didn't think of it. Sure. Well, we've only got. We've only got for the last two. We've only got. Two. I'm just saying, in future, let's make but that yeah, a part no, of I the process. No, I think that's a really good idea. Okay. And I'd like to get the old ones. Up to, and I'm going well, to look into, I made a note for myself, to create a PDF of each first reading that's approved tonight. I'll make a PDF of all of those. If we could post those on the website, yeah. just as one PDF. If I send a PDF out, somebody can post it on the website. Of the ones that we approved tonight, the text, I just want to make that immediately in red. It doesn't get posted until it's approved, the second reading is approved. It can't be posted as an approved first reading? I will look into that because we don't want to mislead people to think that it's a current policy, but I just want people, if there are questions for that space between they, the first and second reading. They are all of They are available on the MASC website, but it is not That's intuitive arduous. to no. find. No, it. it's yeah. not. Right, but right. because they are available on the MASC website, I feel like it must be possible for us to somehow, because we're right. trying to, to, We'll just have yeah. to make it clear. These are not approved. Yeah. These are pending something to that effect. Something. Yeah, I can I also know. see. Hmm? I don't want to do it because I. Uh, I hear you. I'm. Not, it's going to confuse me way too much because I have yeah, to get each mm -hmm. one of these for a first reading, and I have to take the oh, yeah. our current policy. Mm -hmm. I have to take the MASC, and I have to make the changes into a first reading, and then keep track of it for a second reading. It's going on the agenda for a first reading. It's going into your minutes for your first reading, and then it's going to the next meeting on the agenda for a second yeah. reading, and then it's going in the minutes for a second reading, and then it gets posted on the website. Okay. Um, add another because, well, yeah, I'll think about that. That's not putting 
onerous work on anyone else, but that is making sure that people who are interested in this conversation yeah. um, can participate in a way, in an informed way. So we'll keep that up. When you have your subcommittee meetings, you're putting your agenda out and you're letting the public know that mm -hmm. that's going for discussion. Your discussions are usually done in the subcommittee meetings. Agreed. And then it's brought sent, the changes are made there, and then it's sent here for approval for a first reading and then a second reading. So it's out there. The, the policies are out there on the agendas for the meetings. Okay. And I think typically none of this would have been a huge issue. I think all of these newer <laughs> kind of tech yeah. privacy I am expecting, I'm going to get some feedback after tonight from people who weren't really following what the policy subcommittee is up to. So I just want to find a better way to communicate to the public, either follow this track through policy or to, you know, we've got to, yeah. I want to make sure that people are able to access yeah. what's happening no, I agree. in real time. I don't know exactly what that looks like, but. I mean, it's hard enough for me to follow with yeah. all of the. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like, I mean, me too. Yeah. All right, next is. Uh, KDC. Yes. KDC. I was going to start with the O, which is going to make it even more confusing. KDC, the Community Use of Digital Resources? Yes. Um, so, again, this is this. Oh, sorry. Thank you, Linda. <laughs> you got two more to go. So. I move to uh, approve, approve the first reading. Perfect. KDC. Second. Ben, thank you so much. Okay. Um, so, again, this is what we were talking about earlier in terms of using. Um, uh, the community using digital resources uh, that we might make available to them, in particular the Wi-Fi network, um, agreeing to the digital use form, um, and if there's ever an, a, a, a time where we would like to um, use uh, uh, share other equipment or whatever with the with the public, um, and it's the superintendent and the director of technology who are kind of making right. these determinations. So this is really just codifying our current procedures. Yes. Um, and you'll see that both the two cross-reference policies are both INJD and INJDC. So. Anybody have questions about this one? This one is thankfully very straightforward. <laughs> All right. Uh, do we want to vote? Ben? Ben Hersey, aye. Megan? Megan Harvey, aye. Laura Scott, aye. Sam? Sam Hunter, aye. Linda? Aye. Mayor? Mayor Lashmal, aye. Great. Seems pretty reasonable. Yeah. And then the next one is, um, oh, sorry. Um, I move to approve the first reading of a KDCB district website and social media. Excellent. I did it right one yeah. time. That was That's perfect. all that matters. So this is a piggyback off of KDC, because this is KDCB. I think Ben seconded it. You I, did? I, I, I did not. Oh, yeah, love I heard you. <laughs> I lied about it, sorry. You just remember it. <laughs> ben second. Second, yeah. Ben. Um, go ahead. So this is, um, this is around our website and our social media sites um, that are associated with our school district. Um, and so basically we are saying that we will maintain the district website um, and social media accounts um, as authorized by the superintendent and that district staff acting in professional capacities are going to be maintaining those platforms. Um, so the XX, is that just is East Hampton? Yeah. Okay, yep. Um, in order, so additionally, commenting should be turned off. And this was like the one thing when we were kind of looking through what's already um, in school. what's already being used. Uh, we noticed that this was something we would have to be more consistent about. Mm -hmm. But um, so like if... Um, Can I read this section out loud so yes. the public understands? In order, this is the section from the middle of this proposed policy. In order for public communication with the school committee and district personnel to be responded to in a timely manner in line with the legal requirements for public communication, commenting on all district and school sites will be turned off. Yes. Okay. And again, that kind of goes back to what we were discussing earlier about fairness. You know, if mm -hmm. um, we can't, if there's one person who's online a whole lot or who's on Facebook a whole lot and they're essentially like getting to kind of um, have direct access to someone in the district through commenting on Facebook, it's like not fair to people who don't use that platform, don't want to, or, or can't communicate that way for whatever reason. So um, we need to make sure that those um, comments are turned off if they're able to be turned off, mm -hmm. essentially. Mm -hmm. um, and we did kind of do like a brief look through during our meeting. We were like, oh, I wonder, like, are the comments turned off? And uh, at the time, they were on some in some pages and not on others. So that is something that uh, superintendent said she would be um, updating um, staff about. Um, but that was kind of the only the only part where we were kind of like, well, what we're 
everything else in this we're pretty much already doing. Um, and also, I, I like the last sentence here, which is that a high priority yeah. is placed on such platforms being accessible, frequently updated, and user friendly. That's great. So um, we definitely want that going forward. Um, uh, so that anybody who's accessing any, and actually this doesn't just apply to the website because we thought about the website, but I think about how, how often now you see like old social media pages that just kind of get abandoned mm. yeah. for whatever reason. So like we should just remember, you know, if we've got a website set up, uh, set up or a, uh, a page set up on whatever like the latest social media site is for like one of our schools and then everybody stops using that site for some reason, we should remember to yeah, either right. keep up updating it or take it down. Right. Like just to make sure yeah. that we're not um, kind of, you know, we don't want to see a page that hasn't been updated in four years. Space somewhere. trash. Yeah, Space exactly. Trash. Anybody have questions? I sort of do, but I'm not sure yet. Uh, oh. Like how to say <laughs> it's intriguing. it. Intriguing. Okay. <laughs> Anyone else? Again, this is a buy then sometime. No. <laughs> this is just a, a, a basic mm -hmm. policy. Uh, to, to just kind of basically professionalize our existing. Yeah, this one you can understand immediately, which is refreshing. Well, I, think, I think my concern is just with the website. Like, I, it has perpetually been a place that feels like a confusing maze for, for a lot of people. And I, I don't know what... That's procedure, changed. not policy. Okay. But I if think. we say here that it's accessible, frequently updated, and user-friendly, right. does exactly, that mean that we have to make sure it is? Not that we enact how it is. We don't. Right, but just does that mean that we could say we need to get the website? I think you direct the superintendent to do it. and administration to look into the matter but and I, resolve it to comport with policy. I, I also think, too, you know, if a member of the public says, hey, I've tried to find this thing on the website and I couldn't find it, right. that really gives, if, if we're, if we hear about this and, and, and we're hearing this a lot, it's re it, it gives us something else. You know, we can go to the superintendent and say, hey, we know on our policy, it says that we're supposed to be able to easily navigate the website. Yeah. Parents are really having a hard time mm -hmm. finding the school lunch menu. You know, could we, right. could we try to locate it or make it easier to find? So right. I think like that, that's kind of what the, the policy does. You right. know, is and it, it's new. It helps so us now, understand the expectations. I think it holds. Yeah. Someone accountable for making it. Up. Yeah, I'd, I'd love to solve that Me problem. Too. It's yeah, been this a is long the first step. Time. Time. Well, at, and I, I, I do have to use a lot of school websites for my job, and they are like there is a lot of information that has to be put up on a school website, like legally. Right. And um, a lot of it is is written in a way that is it has to be written in a way that is kind of harder for people to understand. And then there's some of it that's written in a way that's more accessible, and links break. And I think that this is something that. Um, I would like to kind of do some research around like uh, how how districts do kind of have best practices around yeah. maintaining um, user friendly websites because it is not just like maintaining uh, a, a personal website or like a personal yeah. like there's a lot that like has a daily to go job, into it. Like, oh yeah, yeah, absolutely. So I I'd, I'd love to. I, I agree with you. It's one of those things that comes up uh, pretty frequently, um, and I think it comes up pretty frequently despite the fact that people are working so hard on it. Yeah. So um, right. you know whatever whatever we can do to kind of help yeah. make that easier, I'd like to make the uh, policy look into and that. then yeah. that's procedure stuff. We right to exactly. Yeah, I think that's great. Yeah. Any other questions about this first reading? Mm -hmm. Vote, Ben. Ben Hersey, aye. Megan Harvey, aye. Laura Scott, aye. Sam, Sam Hunter, aye. Linda? Marquis, aye. Mayor LaChapelle, aye. Great. Well, that's some good progress. Yeah. And Thanks some more things. work for the future, which is great. Um, Love work. Yes. Our next meeting dates, uh, April 23rd, May 14th, May 28th, and June 11th. We also have a work session scheduled for this Wednesday. Today is Tuesday, I'm pretty sure. Mm -hmm. The work session is tomorrow, again, reasonably sure. At, it'll begin at 6 p.m. in the back room, um, and it's going to be a bit of a brainstorming session focused on Mountain View School, uh, what's working, what's not, regarding um, programming, curriculum, issues that people have. We're gonna try to collect information and then um, not overstep our bounds, but bring that information to the attention of the people whose expertise it is to handle those issues. Um, we are about to move, yes. Oh, I thought I sent it. I will email it tonight. It's a one item agenda. Mm. I'll okay. check. I'll check into it. Okay, thank you. I'm not sure if it's on the agenda center. <laughs> If I'm not mistaken, I don't know where the agenda center is. Um, it's not on the school district website. Oh, it's not. <laughs> I don't have an agenda for tomorrow. 
Okay. Is it, do we need to cancel that meeting yes. if there's not an agenda posted today? It had to have been posted um, yesterday. It's 48 hours in advance. I sent that stuff out last week. I don't know where I sent it. Okay. We will look into that and keep yeah, you all. Um, Madam Chair? Yes. It's on the, on the city website. Yeah, okay. it's on the city oh, website. Session? Uh, oh, yeah. It was like a one item agenda. Hey, there was nothing. No, there is no agenda. It's oh, just the, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. My apologies. Okay. Oh, yeah, no. We'll keep okay. you updated on that. Um, so there's no meeting. <laughs> Tomorrow. So we can't, okay. It yeah. has to be posted. Yeah. Okay. Unless it's an emergency. I don't know how that happened. Okay. We shall send out a rescheduled date. Yes. For that initial idea of a meeting that was never scheduled. We do have a couple more dates, so I'll make those public at our next meeting. Our regular session will be April 23rd. So at April 23rd, we'll have a full slate of um, meetings that we had scheduled through July for those work session focuses. Foci, if you will. All right, um, executive session pursuant to MGL C 30 A S 21 A 3 to discuss strategy with respect to collective bargaining or litigation. If an open meeting may have a detrimental effect on the bargaining or litigating position of the public body and the chair so declares regarding the EEA teacher unit and support unit. So we'll be moving into the back room. We'll be adjourning our meeting at the conclusion of our executive session. And thank you so much, everybody in the public. Uh, Mike's, everybody. Thank you.